people, welcome back to Sorbot. Today we come to my favorite book of the Old Testament, Proverbs. The Hebrew title is Proverbs of Solomon, who was the principal author of Proverbs, but now he didn't write every chapter of the book of Proverbs. Now Proverbs are simple moral statements that highlight and teach fundamental realities about life. Wisdom, God's wisdom is available to all of his children as is stated in the New Testament. We need only ask in faith and be willing to learn and receive from God's Word and from His Spirit. But today I want to talk to you specifically about the fear of the Lord. Well, what is the fear of the Lord? Earlier in the series we talked about the two types of fear, one that is good and of course one that isn't. To fear God is to be in reverence and in awe of who He is, as well as to understand that He is sovereign. He's in control. He's the ultimate authority with all power. He knows and sees everything that happens. He is the one that we each must give an account to for our lives as well as for all of eternity. And our eternal lives, our eternal salvation is in His hands. If we really believe these truths in our hearts, then we're going to have a godly fear. It's more than just a fear of getting into trouble or a fear of judgment. But as believers, we don't want to offend the God who has redeemed us from sin. Psalms 130, 3-4 says, If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Well, obviously the fear here doesn't refer to terror. We would have no reason to be afraid in light of God's forgiveness, but rather a deep reverence for God because He has forgiven such a great debt, and I know He has in my life. A believer is no longer subject to eternal judgment because Christ paid that for us. I believe as Christians, we need both a deep reverence not wanting to offend our Heavenly Father, as well as a healthy respect, just like we do with our earthly fathers, that His hand of discipline and correction is there when we need it. You know, I hated to have to come to my dad or, or answer to my dad when I did something wrong. I didn't enjoy the discipline or the, the fact that I had disappointed my parents, and there was a fear there. You know, I didn't want to get spanked or I didn't want to be grounded. Uh, a Christian who doesn't take sin in his life seriously isn't walking in the fear of the Lord. And at the other extreme, a Christian who is legalistic and looks at God as a hard, cold judge with a wooden gavel just waiting to pound you every time you make a mistake, well, that isn't the proper fear of the Lord either. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. So it's important that we have a good understanding of just what that is. Our main motivation is to be loved. We walk in reverence and awe and obedience to God because we love Him. Not just because we fear the consequences when we don't. But that is not to say that we shouldn't. Because while we have been saved from God's eternal punishment from sin, saved from His wrath and His judgment for sin, God does discipline us and chasten us, just as the Father, the Son, and who He delights. But it's done in love. And so God tells us in 1 John 4.18 that perfect love casts out fear. We do not have to be terrified that God is going to pour out His wrath on us. But it seems to me today that we as Christians have really lost sight of having a godly fear that we should have. We've minimized sin and its consequences. We've all too often tried to excuse our sin or think that grace gives us a free pass any time we sin. But the Bible still says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So if you want to know if you're walking in the fear of the Lord, how do you view sin? Do you view it through God's perspective or do you view it the world's perspective. Or when God gives us a command to do something, do we take it seriously? When God told Noah to build the ark, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11:7 that Noah was moved with godly fear. That means he took the words of God and the commands of God seriously and he moved into action to obey them. He understood who God was and that when God spoke, he meant what he said. That's godly fear in action. Not only abstaining from what is evil, but also doing what is good and required of us by God. Hope that helps a little bit. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for sticking with us. 66 books, 66 days. We are going to make it all the way through the Bible together. God bless you. See you back here tomorrow.